Welcome to Electron Line. How does a quantum mechanic oscillator increase its energy? Because we now realize that the frequency of the oscillator is going to be constant. It's going to only depend on the k, the spring constant, and the mass of the object being oscillated. Now, in a classic mechanical oscillator, we can see that we have a mass attached to a spring. The spring is going to allow the mass to oscillate back and forth, and we can see that the amplitude of oscillation can increase gradually, meaning it doesn't have to increase in a stepwise function. If we add a little bit more energy to it, it will increase the amplitude a little bit more, and so you can see that the amplitude definitely can have an infinite number of values, realizing that the total energy of the oscillator is equal to one-half Ka squared, that means that the energy is proportional to the magnitude of the amplitude of the oscillation squared, or the amplitude of the oscillation is proportional to the square root of the energy. But in a quantum mechanic oscillator, even though the general principles are the same, you cannot have an infinite number of amplitudes, a continuous range of amplitudes. The amplitudes need to be quantized as well. And so since the... the um, the frequency, and let me go ahead and write that down because I don't think I have, that the frequency is going to be proportional to the square root of k over m. If m and k are set for a particular quantum mechanic oscillator, you cannot change the mass and you cannot change the, the spring constant, then you know that for a quantum mechanic oscillator, the omega, the angle of frequency, must be fixed. The only way to increase its energy is by increasing its amplitude, but the amplitude will increase in quantum steps as well. How? Again, we can go to the relationship that the amplitude is proportional to the square root of the energy. Now, let's take a look at the energy of the basic state. In the n equals zero state at the lowest energy level, we can see that this is what the probability density function looks like, and the dashed line represents the classical oscillator. What the probability of finding the object of a classical oscillator looks like this, and again, it'll, it'll be more likely to find it at the edges because that's where the speed is slower. It'll be less likely to find it in the middle because the speed is faster. But with the probability density function, it's going to look quite different. You can expect to find it much more likely in the middle and much less likely towards the edges of the oscillation. Now, in the n equals zero state, we can see that this would be the amplitude of oscillation. Let's just call it one, whatever that one is, and we'll talk, we'll calculate that at a later video. But what happens when we now go to the next state, the next energy state, E1 with the quantum mechanics state n equals one, and the energy at the E at the n equals one state is three times the energy at the n equals zero state. Three times the energy, since the amplitude of oscillation is proportional to the square root of the energy, we take the square root of 3, that's 1.732, and now we know the bounds of the oscillation width. In other words, the amplitude now will be from 0 to 1.73, and from 0 to minus 1.73, if 1 was the amplitude of the oscillation at the n equals 0 state. If we then go to n equals 2 state, now we can see that the energy is five times the original energy at the, at the uh, n equals zero state, and therefore the amplitude of oscillation is now increased to the square root of five. If one was the amplitude of the n equals zero state, the square root of five is 2.24, and so now we have a new picture of what the oscillatory state looks like for the n equals two state. At least the amplitude has now jumped to the next distance. If we now go all the way to the n equals 10 state, Notice that the n equals 10 state, the energy at that level would be 21 times the energy at the n equals 0 state. So therefore we take the square root of 21, which is about 4.58 or so, I believe. And so that's now what the oscillatory state looks like and the probability density function of the n equals 10 quantum state of a quantum oscillator. So again, the frequency doesn't change just the amplitude of the oscillator changes and the amplitude jumps in quantum states as well and the distance to the next amplitude is simply the square root of the energy of that level relative to the n equals zero energy level and that's how a quantum oscillator increases energy by simply half quantum jumps on the oscillatory amplitude and that's how it's how it is in the quantum world